Hey, my name is Felipe and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to be working on a parking spot detector and counter. This is exactly the project in which we are going to be working today in today's tutorial. This is a huge parking lot. You can see that there are 396 parking spots, so this is definitely huge, and for which we have 123 available spots. This is a counter which is, a, which is updated in real time, and this is exactly the project in which we are going to be working today. And not only we are are going to solve this problem but we are going to build a very robust very efficient and very modular implementation because we are going to be using an image classifier which is going to take care of classifying if a given parking spot is available or not and this is going to make our solution super super robust and super super modular and the best of all is that we are going to use some mathematical techniques which are very commonly used in computer vision and they are going to be super super fundamental in order to solve this problem. So following the steps of this tutorial you are going to learn how to build a solution exactly like this one and you're also going to learn a few mathematical tricks which are going to help you a lot to solve other computer vision problems in the future. So let's start with it. So let me show you the data we are going to be using in today's tutorial. We are going to be working with this video of a parking lot and you can see there are many 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 different parking spots some of them are empty and some other parking spots are not empty, they are not available and they are currently containing cars. <laughs> so this is the data we are going to be using in this video and you can see this is a huge parking lot containing many 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 different uh, spots and many different cars. So this is the first thing I want to show you in order to, to, to get started with this tutorial and then let me show you the uh, an image we're going to use and it's going to be very very uh, convenient in order to get to, to work on this tutorial and it's this mask. This is a mask we are going to use in order to get the location of all the uh, available parking spots in our video. You can see that this is a very strange image. This is a uh, this is a binary image. All pixels are either black or white, and it's an image containing many different rectangles. This is a very 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 strange image. So. Let me show you exactly how we are going to use this image in order to work on today's tutorial. Maybe I can show you uh, something if I make an overlay of this mask with a random frame from our video, from the video I just showed you a couple of minutes ago. And it's going to be much more clear why are we going to use this mask in order to work on today's tutorial. So I am going to align these two images and then I am going to do something like this. And you can see that each one of these white rectangles is the location of one of our parking spots. And uh, you can see that for each one of our white rectangles, it matches exactly with the location of our uh, parking spots. So now it's a little more clear how we are going to use this image in order to work on today's tutorial. And this is a technique which is very commonly used in computer vision and it involves to use a mask to uh, segment or to divide the image or the videos into different regions. In this case, the regions we are interested in are the parking spots and using this mask is going to be super, 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 super easy and super straightforward to get the location of absolutely all the um, parking spots in this video. So this is another thing I want to show you in order to get started with this tutorial. And now uh, I told you we were going to work with this video, which is the video of a parking lot. And this is the video of a huge parking lot. But uh, it's going to be very messy if we want to work with this video through the entire tutorial. Because remember that there will be a lot of debugging and there will be a lot of different tests and a lot of different everything. So if we work with this huge parking lot, it's not going to be very, very clear to, to know what exactly is going on at uh, every single time. It's going to be much more convenient if we work with a crop of this super huge parking lot. If we work with a... Uh, with a smaller image or with a smaller section of this parking lot. And let me show you the video in which we are going to be working through this tutorial, which is a crop from the previous video, which is this one. <laughs> you can see that this is a section of the entire parking lot and this is going to be way, way more convenient and it's going to be way, way easier to work with this very small video. Uh, the idea is that we are going to use this very small video, this crop, in order to get our project up and running and once everything is ready we are going to test how it performs in our original video, in our original uh, parking lot, in, in the huge parking lot. 
And let me show you something else before getting started with our code, you know, before getting started coding our project. And is that if you notice, this is a video from a parking lot. And let me show you something. You can see that this is only a few seconds long. This is 28 seconds long. And although that's enough in order to, to work on this tutorial, it's not really a lot of time in order to see many different situations or in order to uh, show you all the things I want to show you in all the different tests and all the different things we are going to uh, see in today's tutorial. So what I decided to do in order to make a longer video and a video which is going to be way more interesting in order to work on today's tutorial is to concatenate this video with the same video but play it backwards. So this is exactly what I mean. This is exactly the same video we were watching a few minutes ago. But now if I show you here this part, you are going to see this video is concatenated with the same video but backwards. You can see that now everything is running backwards and this is going to be much much more convenient in order to have a longer video and not only a longer video but a video which is continuous, right? Because every time we reach the end of a video the video is going to start again but in the different direction. So that's all I wanted to show you regarding the data and the mask we are going to use in this project and now let's start coding our tutorial, let's start coding our project. So let's go back to PyCharm, this is the PyCharm project I have created for today's tutorial and I have created an utils file which is going to be very 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 useful in order to uh, make things easier in this tutorial. This utils file contains two different functions and we are definitely going to use these two functions later on on this video. These two functions are going to help us a lot in order to make some things way 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 easier. So remember we have this utils file and we are going to use it later on in this video and these are the requirements for this project. You can see that this is only a few libraries and I have already specified the version for each one of these libraries and as always if you want to install these dependencies you will need to go to the terminal and type something like pip install minus r requirements. In my case, I have already installed these requirements before starting this video, but please remember to install the requirements because otherwise nothing is going to work, obviously. <laughs> okay, so let's start with our coding, let's start coding our project. The first thing I'm going to do in order to start one step at a time and to move super super slowly in, in coding our project is the only thing I'm going to do for now is loading our video and to visualize our video on using OpenCV. That's the only thing I'm going to do now in order to move one step at a time. So I'm going to define the location of a video we are going to be using, which is something like, I, I mentioned I was going to use the crop first, so this is going to be something like samples and then parking crop loop. Okay, then I am going to import CV2 and I'm creating an object which is CV2 video capture and video capture and my video path okay this is going to be cap then I am going to release the memory for this object and I am going to close all windows all windows which I haven't really created yet, but I am going to do it in a few minutes. Destroy all windows. Okay, and then what I am going to do is just iterating in all the frames in this video. So this is something like while red, and I'm going to initialize red as true, red frame equal to cap.read. Okay. And once I have read a frame, the only thing I have to do is to visualize this frame. So cv2 im show frame is the name of my window and then my frame. And now the only thing I have to do is to call this couple of sentences in order to wait and close my window if I press the letter Q. So this is going to be all for now and the only thing we need to do is to first play and let's see what happens okay so um, nothing happened let's see I made a mistake I see what's my mistake I forgot to add the extension mp4 so 
now everything should be okay and now you can see that we are visualizing our video we are moving one step at a time and the only thing we are doing for now is just loading our video and visualizing our video using OpenCV so let's continue and now what we will do is to load our mask and let's start getting the detection of all the different parking spots in this parking lot so i am going to do exactly the same as i did for the video location but for my mask and this is located in mask um, mask crop if i'm not mistaken dot png Let's see, just to make sure, this is in the current directory, maskcorrupt.png. The same mask I show you for the entire video, I have already, I have also made a crop for the cropped video, obviously, otherwise it's not going to make any sense. <laughs> so this is the mask I am going to be using for now. So this is the mask location, and now I am going to open this mask, calling CV2 in read, and giving my mask location. And I'm going to add an additional flag, which is the a number zero, because we are going to open this mask as a as a grayscale image. You notice that this image is uh, definitely grayscale because we only have two values. We have um, absolutely every pixel is either black or white. So it's going to be way easier if we just open this image, if we just load the image like this. Uh, also this way it's going to have only one channel so yeah everything is going to be much much better so this is our mask and that's pretty much all in order to get our mask in order to load our mask from memory and to uh, have an object representing our mask what we have to do now is to get the bounding boxes get the the, the location of all of our parking parking spots and this is how we are going to use our mask in order to get the location of all of our parking spots we are going to use an opencv function which is called connected components this is a very this is a completely absolutely new function we have never used this function before in this channel and we are going to use this function like this uh, i am going to input my mask and then a, num a couple of arguments, one of them is number zero and is number four, and then something like cv2 dot cv2, and this was 32 signed, right? Uh, let's see if I'm okay, sorry, cv2, cv32 signed, okay, something like this. Okay, so this is how we are going to call this function and we are going to call this the return for this function something like connected components. Okay, so we are uh, taking this mask into a function which is some su super absolutely new. We have never used this function so far and the return for this function is a new object we, which we have called connected components. And let me explain how exactly we are going to use this function in order to get the location of all of our parking spots. Remembering one of my previous videos, I talk about uh, a computer vision roadmap and I mentioned that one of the skills you will need in order to become a computer vision developer is knowing some basic, no basic notions of mathematics. Now, this is how we are going to use this function, how we are going to use these connected components in order to get the location of all parking spots. So let me give you like a very high level intuition of how these uh, connected components work. This involves some very, very basic knowledge of graph theory and the idea, the high level idea and a very quick introduction on this uh, subject is that every time you have a collection of elements, for example like this, that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 different elements and some of them are connected, for example in this case these three are connected, these two are connected and these four are connected between them, but there's not connection between the different uh, groups of elements each one of these groups is called a connected component and this is, a, a, this is something very important in graph theory and this is what we are using in order to get the location of our parking spot because if you remember our mask we are working with this mask right now and this is somehow similar to the image I'm showing you here, right? You can think that each one of these uh, circles is one of our white pixels and the fact of being connected means that uh, the pixels are ne uh, next to each other so 
This is somehow similar in, in terms that we can perfectly get the location of all the uh, parking spots, the location, the bounding box of each one of these rectangles by calling these connected components, by asking OpenCV to give us all the connected components in this image, right? This involves some very basic knowledge of mathematics and this is exactly what I meant that mathematics, some very basic knowledge of mathematics is going to help you a lot in computer vision. Being fluent of how this uh, things work is going to be super super convenient so that's pretty much the high level intuition of how this works on how and how we are using connected components in order to get this information and i invite you to uh, read more about how graph theory and components and connected components work in wikipedia or in other articles online now let's continue and that's just like a very high level um, intuition of how this works and why we are using this function in order to get the location of our the um, of all of our bounding boxes, of all of our parking spots, and also for you to get like a practical example of why mathematics is so important in computer vision. Now let's continue. Once we have the connected components, and this is pretty much a lot of information which summarizes where the bounding boxes are located, where these white rectangles are located, what we are going to do is we are going to call one of the functions in the utils file uh, which is called from util import get parking spots bounding boxes and this function is going to receive the connected components and is going to uh, get it's going to output the uh, parking spots right let me show you this function how it works uh, this is the function we are calling, it receives the connected components and the only thing it does is just goes through all the different components it found, it, it ungraps all the information from all these different components and it gets the bounding box from each one of them. So x1, y1, uh, width and height. This is the bounding box of each one of our parking spots. So this is exactly how we are going to use this function and now let's continue. So we are making a great progress and now we are getting the location. We have the location of all the parking spots. We have the bounding box for each one of these parking, uh, parking spots. Let me show you how these spots look like. I am going to print Maybe I can print only one of them. I'm going to print the first one, which is going to be something like this. I'm going to print spot zero. I'm going to press play. And this is only to show you how this uh, works. Okay, I have an error. Let's see why. Oh, I see the error is because actually the name of this function is get co connected components with stats. It's just a, a, a very small uh, edit, it does, it's not really that important. It seems the connected components is also a function, but the one we currently need and the one it's currently waiting or function get parking spots bounding boxes is this other one. So now everything should be working just fine. Okay, so we are visualizing the video again and this is our print. This is one of our parking spots. Uh, you can see it's only four values and if we go back to the function these four values are x1, y1, width and height which is a way to express our bounding box. So let's go back to the main uh, script and let's continue. Okay, so now we have all of our spots. The only thing I'm going to do now in order to move one step at a time is to plot how these uh, bounding boxes look like. So we are 100% convinced and we are super confident that we have in fact uh, detected all the bounding boxes, all the parking spots. So I am going to iterate for spots in uh, spots and what I am going to do is to ungrab this spot which is x1, y1, width and height and what I am going to do next is to call cv2.rectangle and I am going to input my frame and to and my two corners, one of them is one x1, y1, and the other one is x1 plus width, and the other one is y1 plus height. Okay, this is going to be blue for now. Remember that we are going to use green in order to show you all the available parking spots and red for all the ones which are not available. So I think blue for now is going to be a good color. Uh, and then the width is going to be two. This is our frame and this is pretty much all. Let's see what happens. I think we have not forgotten anything. Let's see what happens. And you can see that these are all of our parking spots. 
as all the four parking spots. We are definitely uh, drawing, we are drawing a bonding box around each one of our bonding boxes and we got this information by uh, taking all the connected components from our mask. So everything is going super, 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 super perfectly. And now let's continue. The only thing we need to do now is to take each one of these crops, each one of these uh, bonding boxes and to classify these boxes in order to know if this spot is available or not. So this is what we are going to do next. And in order to do so, we are going to use another function in our utils file, which is this one. It's called empty or not, and you can see it receives something that looks like an image and it's called spot BGR. We are going to see what this means exactly, and it and it receives this uh, image, and the only thing it does is just reshape this image, reshape this data to format the data in a given way and then it calls this function which is a classifier, a predictor. And this is a classifier I have already trained before starting this video and this classifier is completely ready to be used and the only thing I'm going to show you regarding this classifier is the data I used to train this model so you know exactly how it works. Basically this model outputs two different categories, one of them is empty for all of those uh, parking spots which are empty, which are available and which are ready to be used and then another category which is not empty and it's basically all of those parking spots which are being occupied. Um, and if I show you the each one of these, um, see if I show you some examples of each one of these categories, you are going to see in the case of not empty we have many crops of uh, many cars. These are very small images but you, you can see it here. These are crops from uh, our original image from our video and these are all of those spots which are uh, occupied which are not uh, empty so you can see this is pretty much uh, images from not empty parking spots and if i show you some examples of empty in this case we are going to see exactly the opposite in this case we are going to have all of our available all of our empty parking spots so this is only to show you a few examples of how this data uh, works or how all the data i have used in order to train this classifier and i'm also going to show you the script i used in order to create the data and the script I used is something like crop cars. So with everything that we have seen so far, you may realize that this is something very easy to do because it's just um, getting all the detections or getting all the locations of our parking spots the same way we did for uh, the main script. But in this case, we iterate through all these different bounding boxes and we make a crop from our video, from our, from our frame, and then we just save this crop into a given directory. So creating this data is super, super easy. And once this data is created, I train an image classifier using scikit-learn, which is a very, very commonly used library for training machine learning models. And if you want to have the details of how, how, how I train this model, if you want to have the details of how I train this image classifier, then I invite you to watch another video which I created with exactly this same process. It's a video I created with the same process of taking this data, this same exact data, and training this image classifier. I thought it was a better idea to make this into a, a separate video because it gives us more time in this video to focus on many other things which are way 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 more interesting for what we are going to do in today's tutorial. So if you want to see like the details of how I train this image classifier then I invite you to uh, look at this other video which I'm going to post a link somewhere in this video. So what I'm going to do is basically once we have our the location of our parking spot, the only thing I'm going to do is to make a crop of the uh, frame. So I'm going to do something like this. Frame y1 and y1 plus height and then x1 and x1 plus width and this is, this is going to be our spot crop, let's call it. So this is only a crop containing only our parking uh, spot. That's the only thing this crop contains. Okay, so we have our uh, spot. We have an image containing only our parking spot. And what we have to do now is to call the or function I show you in my utils file, which is empty or not. And remember, this function is going to output a Boolean value, which is going to be uh, empty which means true if the parking spot 
is empty and it's going to output not empty in the case of e4 parking spot is not empty so this is how we are going to call this function we are going to call empty or not spot crop and this is going to be or spots status something like this we're going to use this um, name and now that we have the, um, the 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 result now that we know if this parking spot is available or not now we are going to adjust the color in which we are plotting this parking spot in which we are plotting this bounding box so i am going to say if spot status i am going to uh, make this drawing in green right because this means that this is empty and empty means green else i am going to make this drawing but in red because this means the parking spot is not available it means there is something going on in the parking spot ideally there is a car in the parking spot now let me plot this again and let's see what happens and you can see that everything seems to be working fine everything seems to be working super super fine you can see that we are classifying uh, absolutely each one of these parking spots and for each one of these spots we are uh, drawing a green rectangle in case the parking spot is available and we are plotting a red rectangle in case it's not and you can see how fast this is updated because when this car is leaving this spot you can see that it goes from red to green so everything seems to be working super 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 well but you can see that this is not performing as well as before. Now you, we are not getting a real-time detection. We are not getting a, a real-time detection, but definitely this is like a very, very slow execution. So what we are going to do now is to apply uh, some tricks in order to make this happen way, way quicker. And the way we are going to do it is by uh, remembering <laughs> how a parking lot works or how parking a car works. I guess you are somehow remember. So I guess you are somehow familiar with how this process works, and you will know that usually parking a car it takes a few seconds, right? I would say parking a car takes anything between maybe five to ten seconds. And the way we are going to use this information regarding how much time it usually takes to park a car is that if you look closely to the code you will notice that we are classifying absolutely every single parking spot in absolutely every single frame of our video. So at every second, if, if we are taking a video of 30 frames per second, we are classifying 30 times per second if a, a parking spot is available or not. And I think that's way more often than what we need to do, right? Because uh, given that parking a car, it only takes uh, a few seconds, it takes anything between five to 10 seconds, I think that if we make our classification once every 5 seconds, once every 10 seconds, we are going to be just fine. Um, I'm going to say that again, currently we are classifying absolutely every single one of our parking spots and absolutely in absolutely every single frame of our video. Now we don't really need to make this classification that often because parking a car it takes a few seconds. It takes anything between 5 to 10 seconds, maybe longer than that if you are a beginner, but I, I will say usually takes anything between 5 to 10 seconds. So what I am going to do is I am going to classify absolutely every single one of our parking spots, but I'm not going to do it in absolutely every single frame, but I'm going to do it once in a while. I'm going to do it once every uh, I'm going to do it once every second and that's very often we could do it way less often than that and it will work just fine but I'm just going to do it once every second so I'm going to do it once every 30 frames I'm going to define a new variable which is called step and step it's uh, going to be 30 and this is basically how often we are going to classify all of our parking spots now we're going to need a couple of extra variables one of them is going to be or spots status and this is going to be a list uh, of a given size i'm going to find the size of this list now uh, non 4j in spots and uh, for now this is only an empty list which contains none objects so this is completely completely empty but i am going to use this list in order to save the status of all of our uh, parking spots so this is going to be spots status and then the index of my spot so spot index spot in enumerate spots enumerate spots 
and then I am just going to access this uh, index, spot index, and this is going to be spot status. So the, currently I am not really doing anything, I am just saving the status in a list I have created for this. And what I am going to do now is I am going to update the value in this list only if uh, we have been we only once every 30 frames. So I'm going to say something like if frame number, which we haven't defined so far, but we are going to do it in a few seconds. Frame number divided by step. If the mod that of this uh, division is equal to zero, so this means once every 30 frames once every step frames we are going to do this right and if not we are not do going to do it and then we are going to create another four for this other part of the code right we are going to do something like this okay and i need to define frame number and that's going to be pretty much all frame number uh, i'm going to increment frame number here and then I'm just going to define frame number at zero. Okay, that was very, very messy, but I, let me explain exactly what I did. I created a new variable, which is called frame number. I initialized this, uh, this variable in zero because we are just starting iterating in our video. At the end of our execution, I'm incrementing this, var this variable. Every time we read a new frame, we are incrementing this variable. And then I am uh, updating the value of our uh, status or for sparking spots if they are available or not only once every this amount of frames which is 30 and something else I just did is I have decoupled the uh, the update of the parking spot status from the drawing so we are doing exactly the same process as we were doing before but we are doing it in two different steps in the first step we are updating the value of for parking spot status and in the second step we are doing the drawing right this is completely independent from this and in this case we are just taking the most recent value for spot status you see what I mean? And obviously we need to redefine spot status, otherwise this is not going to work. So spot status is going to be spot status and spot index. So I'm just, can, I can just copy paste exactly this value here and this is going to be enough. And another thing we should uh, redefine is x1, y1 with and height because this is taking the values from this or iteration and we need to uh, ungrab these values again so i'm going to copy and paste this sentence and instead instead of spot i am going to say this is spots and spot index so this is going to be enough if i'm, I mean, if I'm not mistaken so i'm going to press play again and let's see what happens and now we are getting exactly, exactly, exactly the same visualization we were getting a few minutes ago. We are getting uh, exactly the same colors. Everything is, is going very well. But now we are getting a real time detection. And this is very, 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 very important. This is, um, this is something we have fixed uh, with the change we just did. Currently, we are classifying absolutely every single one of our parking spots, but we are only doing it once every 30 frames. Okay, so that's pretty much all we have solved our problem in our simplify environment in our simplify video remember we had cropped our original video or original video from our huge parking spot and the reason we made this crop is to make everything much much simpler and to work on a more simplified problem on a more simplified environment now we have solved this simplified problem and it's time to go back to the huge video of our huge parking spot so what i'm going to do is just just changing the uh, location of the video we are loading and that's going to be enough in order to change this uh, this code in order to make in order to see how this performs on the original video so this is going to be parking 9 uh, is going to be this one loop and then obviously I also need to change the mask and the mask will be something like if I'm not mistaken, mask, let's see what's the name of this mask. The mask we should be using now is mask 9, uh, this one. So I'm just going to copy paste. And now let's see how this performs. So the only thing I'm going to do now, I have already did the mask location and our video location. The only thing I'm going to do is press play and let's see what happens. 
Let's see what happens with our video. Okay, so now we are detecting the uh, availability, the emptiness or not of our parking spots, but in our original video. I'm going to do something because it's going to make our visualization much, much more clear. And I'm going to add this sentence before our image show. And this is going to help us in order to get a better visualization. Okay, so you can see it now this looks a little better because it's a little more fit to our screen and you can see that we are getting pretty much exactly the same performance as before. We are getting exactly the same uh, result. So all available locations, all available parking spots, they are green. All the parking spots which are not available, they are red. And for all of those cases where are cars which are moving away from the parking spot, as in this case, the parking spot is updated from uh, red to green. And also it happens the other way around. If we have a parking spot which is uh, available and then it's, it's, it's occupied, then it's going to move from green to red. So everything is working properly, but you may notice that we are getting a really, really, really poor, poor performance. I mean, we are getting, I don't know how many frames per second, but this is not re running in real time either. We are still uh, classifying absolutely every single parking spots every 30 frames. So we are we have already optimized how, how often we are doing this um, optimization, this uh, classification. We could increase this number even more than this. We can make it every 60 frames or every 90 frames or every 150 frames, something like that. But the way we are going to achieve a better performance in this case is by using a similar trick as the one we used before. We mentioned that every uh, when a car is parking, it usually takes something around 5 seconds, maybe 10 seconds, so it doesn't really make sense to classify in absolutely all the frames in our video, and that's why we increased the number to 30. Okay, now we are going to apply another trick, which is if we notice absolutely all the uh, parking spots in this video, we are going to notice that for all of them, pretty much, well, I would say for most of them, but for the 90% of them, maybe for the 95% of all of these parking spots, they are completely still the entire video. Nothing, absolutely nothing is going on in uh, maybe 90 or 95% of these parking spots. So this is something we can definitely use in order to improve our performance. This is something we can definitely leverage to our advantage because it doesn't really make absolutely any sense whatsoever to be classifying a parking spot if nothing is going on, right? <laughs> And you can see that this is exactly what happens for maybe 90%, maybe 95% of absolutely every single parking spot in this uh, in this parking lot, or maybe even more than that, maybe 99%. I mean, if I look at this image, I can see that pretty much all the parking spots are completely still and only a few are changing its status, right? So this is something we can definitely take to our advantage. This is something that we can use in order to improve the performance of our algorithm. And the way we are going to uh, use this information is by uh, we are going to apply our classifier or image classifier, but only in those parking spots which are uh, changing, and only in those parking spots which there's something going on, right? <laughs> because if we are doing it in absolutely all the parking spots as we are currently doing, it's just a waste of our resources. It's just going to make our program slower. It's just going to make everything happen uh, super, super inefficient. Everything is going to be super inefficient and it's like a waste of our resources. And yeah, that's currently the problem we are currently facing. We have a very low performance and we can definitely improve our performance by applying this trick, which is applying like some common knowledge of how parking works. And this is how we are going to do it. I'm going to define a new variable which is called diffs and this is going to be exactly the same as before. It's going to be a list, uh, the same size as spots. And in this list, we are going to save some values which are going to be something like a measure of if there's something going on in our parking lots or not. So we're going to define a function and this function is going to be called calc diff and this is a function we are going to use in order to compute a value which is going to measure how similar or how different two parking spots are, right? We are going to use this function in order to know if something is going on in our, spark, in our parking spot. So uh, this function is going to receive two images which are going to be in one or in two. 
and then what we are going to return this is going to be a very 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 simple super super simple uh, calculation and this is only going to be a subtraction between uh, numpy dot mean of in one we are going to subtract this value to the same value but for im2 so what we are currently doing i need to import numpy otherwise it's not going to work import numpy smp what we are currently doing is we are computing the mean value the mean from all the value of the pixels in our first image and we are subtracting this value to the mean of absolutely all the pixels in the second image this is a very very rough estimation of how similar two images are or how different two, uh, two images are this is like a very very rough uh, way to do it there are many other ways which are more efficient in a way but they are not very convenient for this situation but in this case we are just going to do it this way and it's going to work just fine and i'm going to take the absolute number of this uh, subtraction because we want a, a, a positive value always okay so this function we are going to use and the way we are going to use this function in order to use it i am going to define a new variable which is going to be previous frame and previous frame is going to be known at uh, first but then we are going to use previous frame in order to save uh, every previous frame right every time we iterate every time we read a new frame we are going to save the previous frame into this variable this way is going to be easier for us in order to compare what's going on in each one of our parking spots. So let's do it. Uh, previous frame is equal to none. And what we are going to do now is uh, we are going to do it over here because we need to do it before the drawing because after the drawing, the frame is going to be changed. We need to say something like if this, if we are in this situation, if we are updating this spot status, then we are going to say previous frame equal to uh, equal to frame dot copy. Okay, so this is how we are going to save the value of the previous frame into this variable, and that's pretty much how we are going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, and we don't really need to ask if this is none or not because we are just going to save the value every time we move through this function. So um, that's going to be all for this. And then we are going to compute all the differences and we are going to save the differences into this list. So I am going to create a new iteration, which is here. I am just going to copy paste this, um, these two values. So every time we are in conditions to update or um, or parking spots every time we are once every this amount of frames we are going to go through each one of the spots of our parking spots and we are going to say something like this we are going to create our crop again and once we have our crop we are going to call calc div and we are going to input our crop and we are also going to input the the same crop but from the previous frame and this is going to be something like this previous frame and then the exactly the same values right so this is going to be enough in order to compute the difference and we need to say this is going we, are, we need to save this difference into this list so divs from spot index will be this value right we are computing the difference between a parking spot and the same parking spot but in the previous frame and we are saving the difference in this list we have created uh, for saving all the differences so this is going to be pretty much all and obviously we need to make this if uh, frame number mod step equals zero and also if previous frame is not known and previous frame is not known because if this is a first frame then we don't really have anything to compare against so this is pretty much all and in order to move one step at a time let me show you how divs uh, looks like so i'm going to print divs and i am going to do it uh, here right okay so i'm going to press play let's see if everything works properly and this is uh, everything seems to be working properly okay so now we are printing some values some uh, values from our differences and you can see how this list uh, looks like it's pretty much only a few values and they look like very random values right 3.9 3.7 4.0 here we have 0 0.09 
we have very random values through all these different uh, lists and remember these values are a measure of how uh, different the parking lot is uh, with the previous frame or with the previous time we saved the, the frame which was 30 frames ago so this is how these differences look like and this is how we are going to use this information in order to improve our solution we are going to and i'm going to show you the same print but now i'm going to sort this array by the uh, value something like diffs j for j in mp arc sort and then diffs uh, and i'm going to reverse the order so we are getting the uh, biggest value first the largest value first the highest value first and this is pretty much the same information as before but now the arrays are arranged are sort in descending order so the first value is going to be the highest value and then the other values are going to be lower than, than, than the first one and so on then the, all, all the remaining values are going to be arranged these are, are going to be sort in descending value in descending order and something I want to show you from these prints are that if you look closely, I'm going to make this uh, bigger. Uh, for example, here we don't really see something so interesting. But if we notice in the second list, you will notice that the first value is almost twice the second value, right? And from the second value uh, forward, all the other values are pretty similar. 3.9, 3.7, 3.3, 3.1, they are pretty much pretty similar but the difference between the first one and the second one is pretty pretty high it's pretty much almost twice i would say it's like at least a 30 percent uh, higher a 30 percent bigger if we look the third list we don't really see such a huge a huge difference but if we move to the other list we are going to see a similar pattern so the first value is almost twice the second value and if we move to the other list we are going to see a similar situation the first value is much much bigger than the second one and the second one is much much bigger than the third one and then all the other values are going to be pretty similar uh, between them and then they are just going to decrease their values but very 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 incrementally very very slowly so this is very important because the we are currently looking for all of those parking spots in which something is going on and the way we are looking for this something is going on is by looking those values uh, those parking spots where we have a huge difference if we compare with the previous frame let me show you a few plots which are going to make everything much much easier to understand and what we are going to plot now is the histogram of all of these differences we are going to see how the differences are distributed so this also involves some basic mathematical knowledge so this is also another example for you to notice how important is mathematics when we are solving a computer vision problem a machine learning problem so i am going to plot I'm going to call is hist instead of plot and then I am going to input exactly the same list but the only difference is that I am going to divide each one of these values by the maximum of the array and the reason we are going to do that is because we want a normalized array it's exactly the same information but we are just normalizing the uh, array we are normalizing all these values it's just to make everything look nicer it, it, it it's not really completely needed but it's going to make everything much much nicer especially considering that we have different scales we have different uh, values for all the different lists uh, i'm just going to plot a few and maybe the best way to plot a few is to do something like this plot figure and then i'm calling plot show uh, maybe i can call plot show at the end of the uh, maybe i can say something like if frame number i'm going to say something like this if frame number equal to uh, i don't know 300 then plot dot show right i am going to compute a few of these uh, histograms and then i am going to plot them all at once okay so uh, these are some of the plots i'm just going to put all the plots one next to each, the next to the other uh, we are not going to use absolutely all of them but only a few will be enough maybe something like uh, oh sorry uh, maybe something like 
four or five plots will be enough. So only like this will be enough. Okay, let's work only with these plots. Uh, so currently we are looking at some uh, histograms of all of our differences, right? So for all of our parking spots, we took the difference between that parking spot in a given frame with the same parking spot in the previous frame, and we took many of these differences and we are just plotting the value of these differences. Remember how histograms work, basically the idea is to take some values and to see how often they uh, occur in a given array, in a given list. So if we look at these uh, values, at these differences, you're going to see most of the values are very small, right? We are going to see most of our values are like in this region, and then we're only going to see one or maybe two or maybe three values which take a much higher um, value, right? Most of our differences are going to be super, super small, which means in most of our parking spots, nothing is going to happen. And in only a few of them, in every frame, we are going to see that something is going on. And this is exactly how we are going to detect if something is going on or not. This is how we are going to define if something is going on. We are going to take from each one of these plots, we are going to take these values, the ones that are farther apart from all the other values. This, in, in, in statistics, these values are called outliers because it means that they don't really follow the same distribution as everything else. So it means that in these values, which are farther away from everything else, and they are very isolated, and they are very like, uh, we have all of our data here, and we have these values over here. In these values, it means that something is going on, and it means that something different is going on, right? We have a different, a given behavior here, and we have a completely different behavior here. This is what it means, this is called outliers in statistics, and this is how we are going to uh, define if something is going on or not in our parking spots. So, uh, as I mentioned before, remember that if you are going to work with computer vision, you are definitely going to need to know some mathematics. The more mathematics, the better. You don't need to be an expert, but you definitely need to know some tools. You definitely need to have some mathematical intuition uh, on what's going on and you need to be familiar with different tools. So I am going to plot this again because I am going to show you that we are going to get the outliers. We are going to get all of those uh, values which are very farther away from the rest of our distribution. And I am going to define a threshold which is going to define if something is going on or not. I am going to take, uh, I'm going to consider many of these plots and I have already been studying these plots and I noticed that if we take 0.4, if we take all the values which are 0.4, which are at the right side of 0.4 in all of these histograms, if we take uh, 0.4 as a threshold, we are going to be just fine. So what I'm going to do is something like this. Uh, we are computing our differences, we don't really need to plot the histograms anymore. Uh, and what I am going to do is, we are moving through all the different spots, I am going to change the way we are iterating in these four, because we no longer need to iterate in absolutely every single spot, now we are going to iterate only in the spots given by the, these differences, right? So I am going to say something like this, four spot index in a given array or let's say something like this for spot index spots no let's say so only this spot index in and i'm going to define an array which is given by uh, the same values i have specified here but uh, this is going to be divided by mp max divs and uh, if for j, only if this value, this j divided by the maximum is greater than um, 0 0.4, right? I think this is going to work, I think it is. Now we are only keeping the uh, indexes and I need to keep the indexes, so this is going to be something like this. 
Okay, I got confused for a second, but this is what we need to do. J for J in this arc sort divs, if divs, uh, okay. And now we need to define that spot is spots and spot index. And that's pretty much all. Okay, now we are updating absolutely all the parking spots, which are all outliers from the this distribution, from the distribution of differences from a given frame from uh, compared to the previous frame. So let's see what happens now. Let's see what happens now and let's see if now we are going to solve our inefficiency. Let's see if, if now our performance is going to be better. Okay, this doesn't work obviously. <laughs> and let's see why. Okay, I see why this doesn't work is because in the first frame, the previous frame is none and everything is initialized as uh, none. So that's why this is not working. Let's do it in a slightly different way. I am going to define an array, which is going to be uh, pretty much a range uh, len spots if uh, if previous frame is none, right? If we are in the first frame, then R is going to be this value and else uh, is going to be exactly what I have specified here. And we don't really need to uh, specify this because we don't really need the reverse order. And I think this is going to work if I'm not mistaken. J for J. Okay, let's see what happens now. Everything should be okay. And now we are plotting exactly the same video as before. We are classifying absolutely every single parking spot. And now we are getting an absolutely perfect performance. Now we are getting a real time performance. Now we are getting a real time detection and everything is working perfectly. And if you notice all the changes we are having in this video, for example, let's wait a few seconds until one of our cars uh, leaves the parking spot, for example, here. You notice that this car is leaving and it goes from uh, red to green, so everything is okay. And now let's see a few more examples. In this case, this car is going in, so it's going from green to red. In this case, it, this is going back, so this is from green to red as well. And there will be some examples over here, so let's see what happens. Uh, it's going to take a couple of seconds. In this case, it's going from green. It should change to red in every in any minute. It changed to red, so everything is okay. Let's see what happens with these two. So let's see here. It's changing to red. Come on, it's changing to red. It's it's the, it takes a few seconds, but it eventually changed, and the same happened here. So everything is going. Pretty, pretty well, actually. Something happened here as well. I don't know if you know this. This, ha this changed from red to green. And I have already been doing some tests. And I will say this works pretty, pretty, pretty well. So you can see how well this performs. You can see how well we have solved this problem. And the only thing we will have to do next, the only thing we will have to do now in order to make a very, very, very comprehensive project and in order to make a very, very complete solution is to add something like a counter to know exactly how many available spots we have at every given time. So let's do that. And that's only going to take us a couple of minutes. We have already solved the uh, problem. We have already solved 99% of this problem. The only thing we have to do now is to add a counter. And let's do that by adding something like a text on top of our frame. So I am calling put text and I am giving my frame and then I need to specify the location and this is going to be in 160. I have already prepared what are the values where I am going to put the, uh, the text and the text I'm going to input is going to be something like uh, available spots and then something like this dot format um, and I'm, I'm going to compute exactly how many available spots we have in a couple of minutes, but for now I'm going to continue. Then it's the font, which is this one. And then, if I remember correctly, it's the font size, the text size, and the color, which I'm going to uh, write this text in white, and the thickness, which I'm going to specify in two. And then the only thing I have to do now is to add the uh, values, the numbers. So the number of available st uh, spots is going to be something like um, the sum of the 
spots status array. I'm not sure if we can sum an array of boolean values, but we are going to find out in a couple of seconds. So uh, this is one of the numbers and the other one is just a string of the length of the same array. Okay. Okay, and let's see what happens. I'm going to press play. Okay, so I have some numbers and they make sense. So we have 396 total spots. That's a lot. That's almost 400 spots. This is working on almost 400 available parking spots. This is a lot. This is a huge parking lot. And I will say the numbers make sense. So everything seems to be okay. In order to make this even nicer, I'm going to put the text on top of our rectangle. So I am going to do something like CV2 rectangle, my frame, then the corners, which are these numbers. And then I need to specify the color, which I'm going to say this is going to be uh, black. And uh, I need this to be a field rectangle, so I'm going with minus one. Okay, oh, sorry. Okay, and that is it. That is it. We have completed this project. So, Congratulations to you, to me, and to everyone watching this video. We have completed this project, and this is the number of available spots at every given time. You can see that this uh, makes sense. Uh, maybe we can see how this is updated when a car uh, goes into a parking spot or when a car goes out of the parking spot. For example, now it's 126 and this one is leaving, so it should go to 127 and that's what happened. So. Everything seems to be super, super well. Everything seems to be working super properly. And this is going to be all for this video. In this video, we have built an amazing solution. We have detected absolutely all the parking spots in a parking lot. We have classified if these parking spots are empty or not. And we have added a counter, which is counting how many available spots we have at every given time. And we have built a very, very robust solution, a very efficient solution. And another thing which is very important about the solution we built on this video is that it's very, very, very modular. Because if in the future we realize that, for example, our image classifier is not really working very properly, if something happens, maybe if the lighting changes or if whatever that it could happen in the future and we realize we need to change the image classifier, the only thing we need to do is to uh, take more data, to generate more data and to just train a new image classifier and we can just replace the previous one. That's a very, very important feature when we are building a system, the, the fact of making this system very modular. And that's another feature of our implementation. It's super, 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 super modular. And we have also been going through some examples of how we can use mathematics in order to solve a computer vision project. So this was a very interesting problem. This was a very interesting video. I really, really enjoy it. And please let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. And please let me know your ideas or your recommendations for other projects we could work on this channel on future videos. Please let me know in the comments below. And this is going to be all for this video. My name is Felipe. I'm a computer vision developer and in this channel I make tutorials, coding tutorials exactly like this one where I show you different use cases and different applications and different projects using computer vision. And I also share my experience and different resources for other computer vision developers. So if those are the type of videos you are into, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. This is going to be all for today and see you on the next video.